Hello everyone. As per all your request, today I will be solving October 20 Physics Unit 5 IL. Okay. So this is the question, first question that we have. Please take a moment to read the question. So we have a radiation detector that is placed near a radioactive source and, the, and it measures the count rate from the source. Different absorbers are placed between the detector and the source. The results are shown in the table. Which of the following is emitted by the source? So the answer says that uh, it is a better radiation than gamma radiation. But why is that exactly? Uh, let us cancel out the answers one by one. Let us see if A could be the answer. Alpha radiation only. Well, alpha radiation cannot be the answer because the paper did not completely absorb the radiation, as we can see. So alpha is not the answer. Beta radiation only. It can't be only beta radiation because if it was beta, it would be completely absorbed by the aluminum and lead, uh, lead walls. C is not the answer because once again alpha and beta radiation if they were there then they would completely completely be absorbed by the aluminum and the lead sheets. So there could be beta and there could be gamma. Okay. So this is a very familiar graph which of the following conclusions is supported by this graph. So first of all we understand that uh, when two nuclei fuse, energy is released. So our answer could be somewhere between A and C. So um, B and D are cancelled out. And let us see why is A not the answer. A is not the answer because the graph shows that the low mass nuclei fusing will give us less energy than when fusion fission of massive nucleus occurs. So that is why A is not the answer. So this is a MCQ that we have to solve using the formula. We know that at a constant temperature, the kinetic energies of uh, the gases are same. So we know that the mass of X is four times the mass of Y. So if we put uh, the mass of 4M in the place of MX and M in the place of Y, then we can easily see that Vx by Vy, Vy will be given by one by two. That is why B is the answer. And a negative temperature coefficient thermistor is a thermistor whose resistance increases with the decrease in temperature. That is why the term a negative temperature coefficient, because there is a negative relation between the temperature and the resistance. Therefore, when the temperature decrease, when the temperature decreases, we know that its resistance will increase. Therefore, if the resistance increases, the total resistance of the circuit will increase, therefore the emitter reading will decrease. So our answer is either A or B. Now, when the rate resistance increases, we know that with increasing uh, resistance, the voltage drop against the thermistor will also increase. And we only have a fixed amount of voltage here, supply here. So if the proportion of voltage supply across the thermistor increases, automatically the voltage supply across this uh, fixed resistor will decrease. Therefore, the voltage will decrease. That is why A is the answer. We know that the length of a pendulum, a simple pendulum, is given by the equation t square g divided by 4 pi square. Now our pendulum takes one second to swing from one extreme to the other position. So here you have to pay attention. This is not the time period. This is the time taken for the pendulum to go from one extreme position to the other extreme position. And therefore the time period is the time taken to go from one extreme to another and back to its original extreme position. So one plus one, our time is two seconds. Okay, so we know that in radioactive experiments, we have to subtract the background radiation from the reading. Now, the subtraction part we are all sure about. We always have to subtract, so our answer could be C or D. So let us see why C is not the answer. C is a very tempting answer because we have to subtract the background count from, the, from each count. Well, count means suppose the count that you took for 10 seconds or 11 seconds. So if you took your background count rate, if you took a background count count for two seconds, for example, two, two seconds is a very uh, impractical time, but two seconds. And if your count from the source has been taken for, for five seconds, then subtracting this background count from this count is not justified. The times have to be constant. And also it is very difficult to maintain two seconds and five seconds, uh, two seconds for both 
because if you measure this background count for 2 seconds and if you measure this for 2.5 seconds also then also the two, two times are not equal therefore what we do is we measure the background counted for 5 seconds or whatever the time we measure it for then we divide the count rate by the time taken so we get the background count rate similarly we measure the count rate from count from the source divided by the time we get the rate so now we have both the uh, counts for same time that is one second therefore then we can subtract uh, one from the other okay so here we have a, a student who discovered that the thickness of one centimeter of lead reduced the corrected count rate to 50 percent of its initial value uh, value with no lead okay so we saw the following is correct we can see that c is correct but let us uh, assume that we don't know the answer a thickness of 0.5 cm would reduce the corrected value to a rate of 75 percent of its original value so we know that the relationship between the thickness and the decrease in the count rate is not linear so a is not the answer a is implying that the relation is linear that if you use 5 centimeters then the value will come down to 75 percent so the relation is not linear so a is not the answer the key knowledge here is that uh, the uh, relation between the thickness and the count rate is uh, exponential uh, like this. So a thickness of 0.5 centimeters would reduce the character count rate to 25% of its initial value. Okay, So B could not be the right answer because uh, a smaller thickness will not cause a larger reduction rate. We know that 1 centimeter causes reduction to 50%. So if you use 0.5 uh, centimeter then the reduction should be less somewhere between 50 and 100 percent so not 25 percent so a b cannot be the answer a c could be the answer because two set to two centimeter would reduce the corrected count to 25 percent of the of the initial value this could be the answer a thickness of two centimeter would reduce the corrected value to zero we know that for exponential graphs yeah, this graph never touches the x-axis therefore the count rate could never become zero theoretically so b and d is not the answer either our answer is c okay so we have a situation where we are melting a solid the solid is melting the temperature is constant and we're talking about kinetic energy and molecular potential energy so we know that when temperature is constant the kinetic energy also remains constant therefore our answer could be c or d now since the object is melting therefore the particles will not stay in one place they will uh, start to move around they will gain some energy and using that energy they will start moving around so where does that energy come from that energy comes from the increase in the molecular potential energy the extra energy that you are continuously giving it is not increasing the kinetic energy so what is it doing it is increasing the potential energy so the potential energy increases therefore c is the answer okay so this is another question which is based on a simple formula the time period for a pendulum or uh, for a spring is a uh, 2 pi root over m by k where m is the mass that is hanged from the pinter from the spring and k is the spring constant so if we keep the mass constant because the mass has been kept constant the same mass so the mass is constant so the relation between between the time period and the spring constant will be an inverse relation so what will happen when we attach this with the spring with four times the spring uh, spring constant so if k becomes 4 times then what will happen 1 by root 4 t will become 1 by 2 times therefore t will become 1 by 2 that is b is the answer now this is a very theoretical question a very simple one so we know that resonance occurs when we uh, oscillate something at its natural frequency therefore uh, the answer is a normal frequency is not the term correct term optimum frequency is not the correct term either damping frequency is not the correct term either so the only correct term is natural frequency therefore a is the answer thank you very much for watching and please subscribe and press the bell icon if you want a notification when i upload the second version the final version of this paper thank you for watching